So the NCLEX loves to use these emergent scenarios to test your ability to prioritize. And in this client, you're caring for a client who has melena or that dark stool that tells us they have a GI bleed. Now the client suddenly develops tachycardia and pallor. So they're bleeding and now they're tachycardic and pale. So it sounds like they have got hemorrhage and are on their way to hemorrhagic shock. So would you know which action to prioritize or take first? So we are looking for the intervention that's gonna solve the most dangerous problem, usually our problem of ABCs, without delaying care. So our priority problem here is hemorrhage. This is a circulation issue. This client is actively bleeding. This blood has left their intravascular space. That's why their heart rate has increased to try and move more blood around and that they're looking pale. So we need to, as quickly as possible, restore lost fluid volume and stop the bleeding. Both of these things are important. So which actions will do that? Should we insert two large bore venous access devices or IVs? Well, this is gonna be necessary for me to give not only IV fluids and blood products, but any emergency medications that might be necessary if this client has a cardiac arrest. So that is very important, and I'm thinking I wanna prioritize that one. Should we prepare the client for an esophagogastroduodenoscopy or an EGD? Now, this is gonna be necessary to actually go in and clip the bleeding, but if we call the GI team to have them come do an EGD, not only are they gonna take a long time to get there, but they also can't do anything to help this client until you have IV access in place. The client is unstable, and we can wait to contact the healthcare provider until we first stabilize the client. Should we insert an indwelling catheter to measure intake and output? This might be necessary if the client stays hemodynamically unstable and we're worried about our intake and output, but that might not even be necessary if we can insert IV access in time and start giving IV fluids and blood products. Should I draw a complete blood count to quantify blood levels? So you might have wanted to pick this one based on the principle of assessing first on the NCLEX, but don't be tricked. We only need to assess first if we don't already have enough information to act. And in this case, we know this client needs IV fluids and blood because we know they're bleeding and going into shock. It almost doesn't matter what the CBC shows. Worst case scenario, this CBC is gonna show a critically low hemoglobin and hematocrit level. And all that's gonna mean is that we need to rapidly get IV access so we can start transfusing IV fluids and blood. And we're correct, great job.